How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. With a little over a month left in the 2018-19 NBA regular season, a couple teams have been disappointing everybody so far. Over the first two months of the season, it seemed like the Houston Rockets were then in the water, on verge of missing the playoffs before James Harden took matters into his own hands. All of a sudden, the Rockets are third in the Western Conference in the blink of an eye. Other teams like the LA Clippers, Denver Nuggets, and Brooklyn Nets have been better than expected. But here are five NBA teams disappointing everybody this season. Number 5, the Washington Wizards. With high expectations coming into the season and truly making a deep playoff run now that LeBron's in the West, Washington was supposed to at least make the playoffs. The team had chemistry issues from the start, with nobody getting along, players getting into altercations at practice, from countlessly losing many games from the start, to John Wall having season ending surgery, to repair bone spurs in his left heel, then all of a sudden, suffered a devastating Achilles injury, apparently slipping and falling at his house? Like to be out for the majority of next season, Wall's ridiculous contract will hurt the Wizards big time down the road. With no team likely to trade for him, Washington had to get rid of Otto Porter Jr., Kelly Oubre, and Markeith Morris. The team's been an epic failure this season. Bradley Beal's been the only bright spot for them. Having a career year, averaging nearly 26 points, over 5 rebounds and 5 dimes, playing over 37 minutes a game, carrying the team on the shoulder all year, it's likely he'll demand a trade in the near future with the team's lack of success. Dwight Howard, who's the biggest joke in the NBA, suffered yet another setback in his attempt to return from injury, dealing with a hamstring issue while it remains uncertain when he will return or if he'll ever return to the Wizards, combined with his issues off the court, his NBA career is quickly falling downhill. Number 4, the Boston Celtics. Judging by the team's body language, Kyrie leaving in free agency won't come as a surprise. The young guys don't seem to get along with their superstar player. It still wouldn't shock me if the team comes out of the East, projected to be the number one seed in the conference before the season. Boston still in fifth place, might not even have home court advantage in the first round. Without their two best players last postseason, the team was a win away from the finals, led by 20 year old rookie Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown has regressed this season, coming off the bench, anything short of a conference finals appearance would be an absolute failure given the talent of the team it will be up to Kyrie and his teammates to figure out the chemistry a few months ago called out some of his teammates had questionable leadership even called LeBron James to apologize on how he handled the situation in Cleveland now facing the challenges of becoming the number one guy on a contending team there's been many debates whether the Celtics are better with or without Kyrie it will all depend on how the team matures going forward on the bright side Gordon Hayward has been playing a lot better, looking to get back to the player he was before his injury. Number 3, the Chicago Bulls. One of the most dysfunctional teams in the NBA, having the 4th worst record, the team was supposed to be somewhat competitive before the season. With Zach Levine back from injury, the team's been playing a little better over the last couple weeks. But after countless blowouts with the firing of Fred Hoiberg to playing no defense, the team had their issues with Jim Boylan when he took over. The Jabari Parker signing backfired on them, only made the team more of a liability did the right thing, trading him to Washington alongside Bobby Portis for Otto Porter. The little turnaround over the last couple weeks will at least have a positive impact going into next season. From scoring a season best 168 points in the quadruple overtime win over Atlanta, to Zach Levine taking over games down the stretch, the Bulls are over 500 since the Porter trade. The young guys will look to finish strong and leave their chaos behind. Number 2, the Phoenix Suns. Once again in the lottery, the franchise hasn't made the postseason since 2010. Before this season, Devin Booker made his intentions clear, saying he was sick and tired of not making the playoffs. Their problems are just getting worse. Having an abysmal 21-61 record last year, despite getting the number one pick in DeAndre Ayton, who's averaging 17-10, the signing of Trevor Ariza blew up in their faces. Sophomore forward Josh Jackson's looking like a boss. Adding Ryan Anderson was useless for them. They had to get rid of lottery pick Marquise Chris who's a boss, Dragon Bender who will likely be out of the NBA next season. Instead of improving, the team's looking ahead towards the luck of the lottery for Zion. There's no excuse for Phoenix to finish with possibly an even worse record than last season. Number 1, the Los Angeles Lakers. Nobody could even imagine LA being 6.5 games out of the 8 spot right now. Everything from the front office to the coaching staff to the players have been a disaster. It all started when they failed to get Paul George, who's having the season of his career. As soon as LeBron got there, Magic and Rob didn't surround him with shooters. Instead, brought in veterans like Lance Stevenson and Michael Beasley with the combination of injuries not being in full strength, even though they were the 4th seed before LeBron went down, the biggest 
Pedophilia was trying to snatch Anthony Davis from the Pelicans. Having a year and a half left on his contract, it's no surprise New Orleans refused, making the young guys feel uncomfortable, showing no commitment on the defensive end. With LeBron and Rondo sitting far away from the team, it's safe to say LeBron's been a lousy leader this season. The head coach will be fired soon. Even with all the injuries, James should be great enough to at least help his team get into the postseason. He can still easily put up his regular numbers on the daily basis, but the defensive end has been an atrocity. Not only do their losses and lack of chemistry look bad this season, but when it comes to recruiting big names in free agency this summer, after seeing this mess, why would any star player want to come here? Honorable mentions includes the Pelicans and Cavs. New Orleans who gave Anthony Davis no help from refusing to trade him, now to only playing him 20-25 to 25 minutes a game, ruining his overall numbers, the team stuck in no man's land, holding him hostage for at least till the summer. The Cavs, meanwhile, during the post-LeBron era, was the worst team for the first few months. Their best player Kevin Love missed 43 games. He'll likely be playing elsewhere soon. Rookie Colin Sexton's been up and down. The franchise will need to start from scratch next season. Thank you so much for watching this video. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and anything basketball that will interest you. If you love the NBA, subscribe for more content, more great stuff coming soon. I love all of you. See you next time.